You are um, spearheading what the Haitian equivalent of Pedro Pan. Can you talk to me about that? Well, yeah, it's kind of gotten a momentum of its own here, which is very good because people are excited and energized by this. But Catholic Charities, uh, through with the Archdiocese of Miami, we went to the Archbishop and said to the Archbishop, we think we should make some provisions about caring for some of these children that are at risk. And when we proposed that to the Archbishop, uh, Archbishop Favalora enthusiastically backed it. Um, what we are proposing here, and what we are advocating for through Catholic Legal Services, is we're advocating the federal government to grant to children who are at risk humanitarian paroles and working with organizations in the country and families to, for the government of the United States and these organizations and families to identify these at-risk children. Once they've been identified and hopefully transported by the federal government into the United States, then Catholic Charities and many of its community partners are prepared to begin to shelter these children. Uh, a little bit different from the Pedro Pond, we're not looking to do a mass exodus of children. This has to be a very, you know, measured, a very, you know, sequenced, and a, a very, very, you know, temporary alternative to help these children who are in, you know, the situations in the earthquake zone. And so far in less than 48 hours, the response has been tremendous. It's been almost overwhelming. Um, our legislative delegations from state to federal have embraced this. Our lobbyists, uh, the people with the uh, FIAC, you know, the advocacy on local and uh, the national level have picked this up and are advocating on our behalf. I've been a little disconnected from the advocacy part, allowing Catholic Legal Services to do a great part of that. But the operations part where we are planning and developing and uh, we have spoken with uh, representatives from Tallahassee. We have spoken with the local districts of DCF here. And we have identified possibility of two or three different locations in the, in the two county area. So if someone's watching this or reading it in print, what can they do if they want to help? Well, right now we are putting together what we're calling a resource catalog. And we encourage people that have resources if they have resources that may be able to help us either as volunteers with these children if this plan eventually you know evolves to write to us and tell us what resources they might be able to provide and they can write to us at info info at ccadm.org now there's no guarantee that we'll use every resource that's sent to us but we will take the resources that will be applicable to our situation and use those resources if people are so inclined. Um, you know, I, in your own publication yesterday, there was a picture in the Herald where this little baby was splayed out in this basket on the streets of uh, Port-au-Prince. And if I recognized it correctly because of my trips down there, it looked like it was right across the street from the Catholic Cathedral. And that has been really our call our inspiration. When we look at that picture, we know that our life is not our own right now. We know that we have to serve, you know, our brothers and sisters in Haiti in a way that's been unprecedented. And we're really calling on the government to do the same thing. This is probably something that we will never see again in our lifetime to this magnitude. And we hope that, you know, our government will continue to be compassionate and look at these children and give them an opportunity because they've been the most vulnerable.